this is to show how much of an advantage you have when using Clipper, or honestly, even just RepRap firmware if you tweak the slicer properly. So, I'm showing, you know, it was set with pretty high speeds, which right now I'm going to set it back to the lower original default speeds from that profile, which is a Voron uh, 0.2 4mm nozzle profile, the standard one built in the Super Slicer. And it's a, uh, there you go, 6 hour and 33 minutes. So now, let's, you know, double the speeds and see what happens. But just doubling those speeds, it barely makes a difference. And the reason is, is because you have to remember about acceleration, one, and two, about your um, other speeds that are based off of those. You know, so basically you want to look there uh, on this top left and see what features are taking the most percentage of time. And that's where you want to look. Gap fill is always a big no-no, which means that either your line width is not optimized, the STL is just not working good with your line width, and uh, you can either have to optimize it in CAD or in the slicer. So first thing you want to do is you always want your other speeds to be derived from the main two speeds. So when you want to tweak your actual slicing speed, you only have to set the first two, you know, just your infill and perimeter, and everything else will pull from that. You know, otherwise you're redoing all your speeds every time you want to make a change, which is unideal. Your thin extrusion width and like your thin walls and gap fill, you really don't need to mess with them too much because um, you don't really want to go too fast. Gap fill can really cause the printer to shake a lot or to try to squeeze a ton of filament out. And your thin wall, um, you know, same thing. It's not the most ideal situation trying to make a smaller line than the orifice in the nozzle. Now, most important is your acceleration, which if you're using clipper, especially input with input shaping, you can really, you know, double at the min your acceleration. But when you use the shaper underscore calibrate command, if you look at the results before you press save config, it'll tell you what the max recommended acceleration is, which on a 400 machine, it should always be over 4,000 for the most part. Um, on a 300 machine, it'll be way over 4,000. Um, you know, I think I have before my gain chip gate, I was getting like 4,100 on my 400. Now I get it like 9,000 for the one axis and like 13,600 for the other. So we're staying way conservative. But that made a huge, huge impact. That, that was a two hour improvement now. Um, next is looking at your width. Now, Super Slicer has changed to a much better setup where it actually uses its spacing. Uh, even the printed forward stuff was always trying to force a 0.4 a line width, but it wasn't really doing a 0.4 a line width. Um, I mean, it was, but it wasn't doing lines 0.4 millimeters apart. It was making it squeeze 0.4 out of the nozzle, which isn't ideal. It's not what happens. It, it expands a little bit. It tries to mushroom out a tiny bit, especially if you're pushing up against a layer below it. So what we want is a 0.4 line spacing. So if you s draw a file with a... 1.2 millimeter wall it'll be three lines of that nozzle 0.4 wide now if you had it set the way it was before it would actually be you know two and a half or 2.3 and that's where you would get the gap fill to come in and it also part wouldn't be as strong and it would waste a lot of time so we see we're still at 23 percent for gap fill so now it's just because the stl so what you do is you come down and you turn on overlapping also for perimeters. Now, if you're looking for the strongest part, um, that's the most important thing first, turn that setting on. If you're looking for like a lithophane or something that's very sensitive to what's going on inside the part with like a clear filament, then you might not want to use that setting. And if you're not worried about extreme strength, just turn off gap fill and leave that off. Both of those solutions will get rid of that 20% of your time being from gap fill and will speed up the print a lot. I mean, look at that. that we're, we're, we're almost, uh, you know, we went from 6 hours and 30 something minutes down to 3 hours. We dropped 3 hours off the print now and we're going to have better quality um, because the line was being optimized. Also, when you increase acceleration, your corners get nice and crisp. Uh, 
it helps other things. You don't rely on pressure advance nearly as much. Um, the only speeds that are really sensitive to going too fast are your top infill, or if you're ironing, you gotta be real careful, which honestly, if you have your profile tuned properly, you should not need ironing. All the parts that I post on the, on the group, or um, that I send out, that I print for people for the kits, I don't use ironing in any of them, and uh, with some of them, you really, it looks injection molded, like, uh, and I know people always say that, but they legitimately do. Um, I'll put some pictures on the uh, on on a blog post on the website, which I'll stick in the description when I get a chance, so you guys can look. This way, you know I'm not a uh, I'm not full of it, but people that know me personally, which pretty much everyone that's on this channel right now does, will uh, you know can verify this. I printed FDM orders that look like they're MJF. So anyway, now let's just see what those other settings did. And let's bring it back down to the original 2000 for a perimeter for the acceleration. Like, say you don't have clipper, um, but your infill acceleration and your travel acceleration and bridge acceleration, you still want to increase because it's not going to affect your skin quality. But we're still losing over an hour. We're losing like an hour and a half of print time. Um, and we're keeping that outer perimeter acceleration at 2000, which was the original value. Uh, and that also was <laughs> way higher in film, actually. I forgot about that, so. Um, yeah, now we're going back to the exact same amount of infill and perimeters, and the 2000 outer, and we're at four hours and 38 minutes. So that just shows how much optimizing the slicer can do. Uh, and once again, that's, you know, your infill, who cares what the acceleration is, you don't care if you get a little bit of ringing in your infill, and for your travel, you really don't care if there's any ringing, but your out of perimeter is at 2000. So you're not gonna get any ringing um, caused by these settings, and you're still getting a huge reduction in print time, and you should be getting an increase in quality by having your other settings optimized. So, I mean, a lot of people have the misconception that faster means worse quality, but in reality, there is, yes, you can go for extreme speed, which you're going to get worse quality, but for the most part, optimizing should mean better quality and more speed, which most of my clients, that's what they want. They want to increase their quality, but if they don't really care about speed, but when I show them that they end up increasing their speed too, they, they love it. Like, especially if they do a clipper conversion, they're usually cutting their print time in half and increasing quality at the same time which, you know, they double their output, and then more importantly is they increase their yields. You know, instead of having one out of every five prints fail, they might have one out of every 20 prints fail, and usually it's user error, like didn't clean off the build plate good, or had greasy fingers when they took stuff off the build plate, or ran out of filament. You know, not, it's usually not the printer's fault at that point. So, uh, there we go, I'm turning, turned it back off, uh, the uh, overlapping for perimeters, so gap fill on, even gap fill on, and the original settings just showing optimizing your acceleration properly, that, that shows an improvement. But when all these things stack together, they just really make an amazing end result. If you guys have any questions, you know, comment if you don't like it, <laughs> let me know. If you like it, please like the video. I'm trying to... Uh, hopefully grow the channel a little bit and uh, if this is a good direction that I'm going in this is showing that I was starting from the Voron basic uh, profiles now I'm going to show you one of my profiles that uh, I have which I'll link the profile bundle because um, now by using percentages instead of how like they had it where it's a 0.2 for a 0.4 nozzle I had grandma by accident but instead of having a 0.2 0.4 nozzle they uh, I'm using it with all percentages, so if you change your nozzle size, you change it in your printer settings and it doesn't matter, it'll still work with the same print profile because of the fact that it's a percentage of nozzle width. So that's what's much better about using percentages. It almost kind of, it basically makes your profile parametric, um, <laughs> per se. But, uh, Hopefully this helped you guys, um, and if you want me to do more guides like this, um, 
I'll do a few more and I'll go into more specific situations. Uh, just let me know what you guys want me to do. And uh, thanks for watching. If you managed to watch till the end.